Welcome to the Smart Women in Business podcast with me, your host, Jane Mackay. We've got big ideas for small business. Hello and welcome to the Smart Women in Business blog and podcast. Today I am talking to Ariel O'Farrell, author of two books, including Values Not Just for the Office Wall Clerk, How Personal and Company Values Intersect, and SMART, Smart, Objective Setting for Managers. Ariel is fascinated with what drives business performance and what blocks it. A seasoned executive coach and trainer, Ariel also takes a broader look at the organisation, what it's designed to deliver and how it impacts on performance. Ariel is the first and currently only CMI accredited master in change management in Ireland. Welcome to the show, Ariel. It's a real pleasure to have you. Thank you very much, Jane. I'm delighted to be here. It's quite um, a huge sort of background that you have having authored two books um and 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 you run your own business so tell me about your business journey uh so far and and how you got to be where you are today yes uh, indeed it's a very interesting and circuitous route i have to say <laughs> i originally did um science in uh college i did a degree in physics and maths and i when i finished i went to your country australia and worked in sydney um so that was my first real job uh, was in sydney and the maths got me into financial services so i ended up uh, working for the commonwealth bank of australia uh, for about seven months and i was quite fascinated with there was two different managers and I was fascinated with why, how people gravitated towards one and maybe not so much towards the other and I was just fascinated with what's that person doing that people respond to and what's that other person doing that people try to avoid um, thinking it was a bit of a blip uh, and I'd go on my merry way onto a career in finance I moved to Boston in, Aust in the US uh, where I went into fund administration, so the sort of mutual funds, the administration of them. Um, and I worked in operations. And again, I was very, the, uh, my interest was peaked between the, the, the individual's performance and the, the, the needs of the, it, the, the organization. So the, the performance the business needed to deliver. So it was kind of how do you match the two? Because the, both sets have needs and how do you match both needs while everybody wins? Um, so I ended up moving quite quickly into management and then my last six months in Boston was working on an org design project which was really really fascinating because oftentimes within organizations we behave in certain ways based off of the design of the organization mm -hmm. but we're often unaware of this it is an intangible uh, so we behave in certain ways without necessarily understanding the drivers of why we behave in those ways so that was really interesting and it was an amazing experience to get it so early on in my career and mm. um, because a lot of times we go into big organizations and we kind of uh, adapt to the culture without really questioning kind of how does it get to this be, to be this way and um, so then I moved back to Ireland that the call of the, the green emerald isle call was calling me so I moved back to Ireland and was working in the funds industry in Ireland which was at that time uh, just you know growing at a rapid rate uh, which is kind of what brought me into learning and development because there was a huge amount of of business but there was very few people um who actually it, the, the the industry was so early in its development there wasn't actually that many people who knew how to do the work so i kind of moved into training and learn, uh, development and uh, and that's kind of where it really started evolving. The first three or four years were mainly in the financial services. Then it started evolving into my curiosity was going, oh, what about this and what about this? Um, so th the first six months were technical training. And then they were saying, you know, all those people we promoted to management, would you teach them how to manage? And um, so then I got involved in the whole you know, performance management process and the recruitment and competency frameworks and just always that kind of what is it that that, that kind of enables people to, to, to perform their best and, and what is it that stops people. So, um, and then I was really interesting, training, training is brilliant for skills and knowledge and sharing collective understandings, but, the, and there's people who sit in the room and walk out and we'll put it into practice. And there'll be people who will walk out of the room and go, yeah, not doing any of that. And there are people who go, yeah, I should definitely be doing that. I, I definitely really think I should be doing that. Um, and yet they get back out onto the floor with great intentions and end up um, forgetting all about it. So I was kind of curious about those people who were going, oh, what would, 
what would help them turn the dial for them? Like what would it get them to, which brought me to executive coaching. So I kind of trained as an executive coach to do the one-to-one -one work. Um, and so I, then I, I set up Evolution Consulting in 2006. So it was a, a good time to, to go out. And I suppose the, the, I had a, a client lined up and in effect it was, nowadays we would call it the change manager role. In those days it kind of hadn't really been heard of, um, but it was very much around the how do you get people to engage with, uh, it was an accounting system we were moving, that the company was moving to. Um, and how do you get people to engage with it and take it on and start applying it and you know and, and um you know and, and it was interesting because the legacy system was staying in some capacity so you had this sort of some people were going oh but i'll just use the legacy system and you're going yeah that's not gonna quite that's not where we're going with this you know so yeah. um so that was really interesting <laughs> please um, stop please stop using that one but <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, well, interestingly, I had a, one group, they were the client servicing team and I was saying, they were like, well, we don't really need to learn this. And I was like, well, what if your client calls up with a question and they were going, well, should we just look at the old system? And I was like, well, what if the information isn't on the old system and you need to answer the question from the new system there? Well, we just ask fund accounting. Fund accountants are, or if it's a daily world, it's like you don't just rock up and go, any chance you could answer this question, they're going, I'll get back to it at like seven o'clock tonight. <laughs> and the client in the meantime is going, bananas, going, where's my answer? And they were kind of going, oh, well, they're not going to, they're not going to, I was like, what do you think is going to happen when they're having to wait for you to respond, get your answer to come back to them? And they were like, well, they just wait. And you're going, no, they're going to go straight to the fund accountants and get the answer from the horses. <laughs> Um, but, and they were like, could not believe that this would, would happen. But years later, a couple of years later, I was talking to somebody who was still working, in the, like I was only contracting, they were, and uh, the years later, they said to me exactly what I had suggested to them might happen was that the clients who are kind of going, why are we paying for this service when they mm. don't know the answers? <laughs> Um, so it's a great one to use for people with change management because it's kind of like, here's one I've prepared before <laughs> for you and they go, oh, that really does happen. Yeah. 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 Um, these things do come to pass. So then, so setting up uh, evolution, I kind of got into the whole leadership development, um, you know, the, the, so the, even the, how do you differentiate what skills and mindsets do you need at different levels of management and how do you develop people, you know, how do you develop their strategic thinking, how do you get them to think, you know, what plan out their strategy, how do you get them to cascade the strategy, how do you get them to all of these things so so over the last what is that for 15 years um there's been a lot of learning leadership development strategy uh, innovation kind of bringing it into to diagnosing what exactly is the issue with the or you know why is the organization not thriving to the extent it can be so it's not necessarily that they're doing badly it's that they maybe aren't doing as well as they could be so it's always to me it's always around well how do you max it to the best of the resources you have, max it to the top, as opposed to, you know, bring it to a level where it's like it's sustainable and nobody's getting that nose out of joint. It's kind of going, you're still leaving something on the table there by mm -hmm. doing that, by, by looking at it in that way. And um, so it, it's sometimes it's remedial, sometimes you know, it's, they're in a lot of pain. Sometimes it's they kind of go, do you know what? We know we can do more. Yeah. Let's explore that. Because culture so is, is such a, an indicator of performance in organizations yes yes, yes and, it really and if you is. have poor leadership and it comes from the top your performance sure is doesn't. not gonna not gonna succeed yeah yeah, well, that's, yeah. what a journey um and and the intricacies of of knowing where the issues are within an organization and 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 wading through the personalities and the ego and 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 the different personalities and how people deal with all of that within an organization can be just incredibly difficult um and the resistors to change and so yes you went into this uh consulting role um in 15 years ago congratulations that's a huge yes, thank you. <laughs> huge long time um how has your business now evolved you know that was the beginning of sort of the digital age really when digital was coming in into organization how over that kind of last 15 years or the last few years were there signs to change up things within your your business and and what were those signs signs to change for you apart from having children <laughs> which we spoke with yeah indeed 
<laughs> apart from having that. Um, you know, I, I would say, to be honest, in terms of the technology, the biggest shakeup from that point of view has been COVID because yeah. people, the, the kind of work I do, people definitely prefer doing it in person. In person. You, they, they definitely kind of prefer you being there and doing it in person and that type of thing. Um, and so COVID has kind of turned that on its head naturally. Um, and I suppose I, while I have worked in, and even in, when I've worked in, you know, companies where you're maybe doing some of the assessments and that, I've kind of travelled to where they are. You know, it, even that has been, you've gotten a plane and you've gone and visited them. So it's really been that in person because that, and I suppose part of it is, as as good as as zoom is and as technology has been and it's been a very good way of dealing with and continuing kind of the economic side of of the world while covid has been going on and um, it still isn't the same you still can read so much by being in the room with somebody or with a group of people and you can walk into it and you can say oh you can kind of immediately go oh, okay i see yeah. where this I can is sense the, dynamic, I can sense the dynamic and and being in that very people focused business it would be so yeah. difficult for you right now yeah 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 so it is it's it's and i have done workshops and again you're 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 doing stuff that's quite challenging and it's not a, I, I suppose I, sometimes I I will I'm, I would I have designed the workshop but then I like having that freedom of going where the group need to go mm. to get them to that point of of kind of moving the dial so it's very it's a lot harder to do that through um zoom or webinars because you've 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 got your stack and you know you have to have your your presentation sort of more or less ready so you're kind of thinking what can happen you know what what may come up or what do i need to have a slide on and and it's just not quite as spontaneous mm. there's a feeling of i have to keep to this more so than and um, but that sort of takes away a bit because sometimes there are things you need to there might be a tool or there might be a technique or there might be a, a piece of information you need to share with them um, and and draw things out and bring them through you know showing them journey. the image isn't the same yeah. as yeah it's not yeah. the same as getting the to kind of drawing it up on the board or drawing it up on the and bringing them through the different stages of it it mm. just isn't the same so um i i do hope as much as technology is very helpful and useful i do hope that we'll always retain the uh, connection with the people mm. because i think um you know, you know even with uh, what we do know of, of how people are struggling with the isolation and not seeing people, I, I do think we still, as humans, we haven't lost that social, that need for social. It's one connection. of our hierarchy of needs. Yeah, yeah. You know, human connection is so important for us to thrive. Yeah. And I think one of the things that we're missing out on is the innovation that comes from those spontaneous conversations. Yeah. As much yeah, as absolutely. we are able to innovate through tech, that's not the only innovation that occurs when you get people together. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, you just, you kind of, it's a throwaway comment. It, and just even with the technology, that even when you are having a, a, a group, you know, kind of chit chat, whatever, it just is, because everybody's like on their best behavior. <laughs> everybody's like waiting for somebody else to talk. It's just, it doesn't have that spontaneity to it. That, no, and everyone's that, always that, slightly on delay yeah. and we're, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got my first first ever clubhouse this afternoon, so we'll see how that goes about bringing people together in a in a very digital way, but having spontaneous conversations. So yeah, wish yeah, me luck. Yeah. <laughs> I, best of luck with us. <laughs> Let oh, me know how it goes. <laughs> oh, scary. Anyway, so um, you mentioned off air that you have three gorgeous children. How do you manage your life as an entrepreneur? And just a shout out to Ariel, because she's homeschooling, which a lot of us mums are, well, and parents yeah. are feeling your pain. Yes, yes. And they, they, they originally told us it was for three weeks and now they're gently breaking it to us. It's going to be for longer, although I think we all suspected it was going to be for at least five weeks. Yeah. Um, luckily, the, at this stage, the, the children are a bit older. So I, my heart really goes out to people who with younger children, whereby they need, they need to have somebody with them so that they'll sit down and do the they work. They homeschooled a preppy um, last year and it was, you yeah. can't read. Yeah. He can't, yes. he's never, he'd only done three weeks of school. Oh, anyway. Yeah, yeah okay. exactly. So, so people in that, you know, in that boat, I, I just, I think I'm lucky compared to that, I have to say, because at least the, 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 even the youngest, who's nine, she's done all the basics, reads and writes and does her maths or whatever. So, uh, although we did frame it, um, 
we we had that the school was closed initially in March for for most up until the summer actually, and then they went back for September to to December. And um, so when we went back, so the first closed down, we were I was very much there in the room and giving them work and that kind of thing. And this time it was very much you know you're you're older and you're well able to. You're on your own, you know. <laughs> you should be able to do a lot of this yourself. Um, so yeah, I, I think over the years, it has been that balance between um, the the work and the home and the kids and the and as much as possible um, trying to to balance it all and to have the flexibility, um, which I suppose having the consulting work has has allowed me to do. Um, you know, you can kind of do the 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 decide which hours and when you do some of the work. So obviously, if it's if you're going into the office. You're, for meetings you're going into the office and you know mm. when those are but otherwise you can do work in the evening or you can do work you, you know you, you've kind of able to uh, I suppose have a lot more control over how you um schedule it out which is mm. great um and I suppose that that uh, that piece where you're able to work for yourself is very helpful in that sense you've a lot more control over the balancing of it um and I suppose it, it does get easier when they're in school and they, you know, they, they're able to, you know, you've got a good chunk of the day where you're going, right, well, at least I've got that to myself. Silence, silence. <laughs> um, and over the years, like we've, we've had sort of over the years, we've had different ways of, of um, we, you know, we've had au pairs and we've had you know, after school and things like that. And so we've had different versions of, of it. And um, for a few years, I just was like, actually, I'm just going to balance it that I do kind of mornings as much as possible, some evening work or whatever, but try and be there in the afternoons. Mm -hmm. But it's great because I, I can now see I'm sort of at that point where I'm kind of moving back towards much more full time work where you're kind of going, OK, um, they're that bit that bit older they're that bit more independent or whatever so it's kind of nice because when you're in the middle of it it can be very difficult to think there's ever an ending to it and you're kind of going okay right we're starting to get towards yeah <laughs> you, it, you do get there and it's interesting because <laughs> you actually you actually get to the point where they don't really want to spend time with you and they don't want to talk to you and you're there kind of going, should i be spending more time with them like should i, I be making that yesterday them talk to them? i tried that yesterday i said to my kids do you want to do something? We've only got two days of school holidays left. And they went, no, mum. We're just yeah. playing Roblox with our friends. And I went, okay, I'll, I'll go yeah. over there and work then. And, yeah. and I'm getting to that point. But if there's snacks to be need, snacks needed, then you need mum. Yes, <laughs> yes. Well, we, we have a wonderful um, uh, woman in Galway in, in the west of Ireland who has gone, put her kids cooking courses online on zoom so twice a week uh, the youngest one logs into our zoom class for an hour for, for 40 minutes or whatever so it's all over the world oh. if anybody's interested oh. um and people just log you log in or whatever and uh, she gives you the recipes in advance which is great because like she's getting a life skill and it keeps her busy for about 45 I, minutes i might have to find that link <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So yeah, it was a very innovative way for her to kind of really use technology in a good way to for to save all our sanity. Yeah, as I well as her business. Convince my ten-year-old to make herself a cup of tea this morning. I'm like, yeah. you can oh. do it. You can do yeah. it. It's not that hard, darling. It's, Life school it's number Saturday. one. Saturday. <laughs> Saturday, bringing it into your room in the morning. Oh. Is, that's the next one. Oh, she sleeps in later than me, though. Oh so. no. So, because I have the six-year-old that comes in every morning at six thirty, still for cuddles, which I still appreciate. So, and yes. sometimes I do find myself lying there waiting for him, going, "I know this will end one day." Um, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so what does a great day in the office look like for you, Ariel? What? Do, well, at the moment, it is looking <laughs> like um, very much promoting the book, um, doing proposals with clients, and uh, so it's that, that start of the year kind of get kicking everything off. Um, and I am currently writing my next book as well, so I wow. am kind of madly trying to kind of get that done. Um, so yeah, so that that's kind of at the moment, it's quite a lot of promotion of the business. Yeah. Um, the 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 working on the the, the getting the business um, and uh, so yeah that's what it is at the moment but uh, you know at other times of the year this is the, the when you run your own business is the getting the the cycle of you get yeah. the business and then you have to deliver the business and then you get the business and you have to deliver the business it's Never that, that um, trying to yeah trying to get a sort of at an even keel is a difficult part 
Um, but uh, you know, other if if there's uh, I'm actually in the middle of doing delivering pieces of work, it can be um, you know kind of going working with the client. Uh, some of it is. I kind of go through, you know, the diagnosis stage, mm. diagnosing what's going on. And then, uh, you know, and again, that's a lot of ref you're having conversations and then you're reflecting back. So I would do an awful lot of reflection in my work uh, mm. in terms of what's really going on there and why would that be? And, you know, you mentioned different personality types and you, you mentioned also my book around. So I'd be kind of almost profiling people. What's their values and what does that look like? And what's their energy? You know, what's their levels of emotional intelligence? What's their um, uh, personality preferences? So I would use insights discovery. So what's their personality preferences and what does that do? And how does it, so you're almost kind of building up. This is the kind of way they're going to react to things. Mm. Um, and so that, that feeds into the diagnosis. You're also looking at what's, um, what work you know where are things not working so is it are they clear around their strategy are they clear around where they're going because if they're not then they might be in groundhog and um, are they clear around how they're going to get there are they clear is the is the organization designed in a way to enable them and um, so a lot of times organize particularly if they're in growth phases you know even where are they on the growth trajectory mm. are they kind of growing their business are they um, are they, you know, sm a small business and startup? Are they kind of well established? Are they sort of, you know, bureaucrat bureaucracy gone mad? You know, where are they yeah. with that? Because that feeds into it as well. Um, and then, you know, it, 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 you're trying to figure all of that. Uh, so a lot, I was going to say there are a lot of times companies are very, they're mature on their, the, the, the work of the business and what the they do. Yeah, the operations of it, but they're not very mature on the organizational um, um, processes so the ones that go across the running of the business mm. I mean that could be finance it could be communication it could be some of those you know recruitment it could be performance mm. management so a lot of a lot of them fall into the HR space but they're not yeah. a HR function they just mm. even if you as I say even if you don't have a HR function you still need to do these things yeah. you know um, so it, you know, it's, it's, so sometimes they're not very mature on those, and that, that's what's causing the problems. Mm. Um, so then it comes into leadership capabilities, the, the culture of the organisation. So you're kind of always reflecting on what's going on and why is that, and where would you, and if you were going to, you know, if you were going to do something different, where would you, where would you get your best bang for your buck, kind of mm. thing? Where do you need to start from? Um, so a, a lot of it reflection, and then once you've kind of like identified you know kind of okay i think this is what we need to do you're kind of working them walking them through what it would look like in the proposal and that um, and then you're getting into implement you know working with them to to do whatever it is you know whatever the solution is whatever where you're proposing kind of working with them to implement it or to get it done designed to get <laughs> get it done, strategy. Whatever. Strategy <laughs> yes no exactly good you this, implement it. <laughs> yes indeed <laughs> um so that's that's sort of i suppose what a, a project would look like yeah, it's interesting that you mentioned um, the, the, the small changes that you can make in an organization. I'm reading um, Atomic Habits by James Clear at the moment. And he talked about there's an example of the British cycling team. And this guy came in and just made one small change consistently. And they went from being total yeah. nobodies to world champions yeah. within, I think, five years from memory. Yeah. Don't quote me on that. Yeah. How the changes that you make in an organization don't have to be momentous at the time but if you keep making yeah. small improvements and this doesn't just apply to organizations and businesses this applies to individuals and and individual businesses that can have absolutely huge changes for, for improvement and and satisfaction and joy happiness all of those key yeah. outcomes in terms of emotional outcomes and that then reflects on performance within the business financial outcomes. Yes. Yeah. I absolutely. I would agree with you. And it, it, um, that that's so. I mentioned reflection. I would do quite a lot of reflection. Um, and I think it's one of those. And, and clearly, the guy. I, I know the book. I haven't read it now, but I know the book you're referring to. Yeah. Um, and I, I, you know, to be able to do that takes reflection on what needs to change what's kind of what's tripping people up and it can be really small things it can be really you, you know you've never told them how to do that before and they're going mm. what you know have you ever told have you ever sat down and told them how to go about that task no 
but you know you're you're frustrated with them that they're not doing it yeah. but you've never told them how to do it you kind of see a problem here and they're going oh right okay and it could be something as simple as that and they have a conversation explain it and all of a sudden all of that frustration is gone you know sometimes we but it's the it's the taking the time out and it's it's interesting because you don't hear of reflection um mm. as a core skill or a key skill that senior people should be doing and um, but actually they should be doing it on a you know they should be taking out at least once an hour and uh, sorry an hour once a week they should be taking it out to kind of go what's going on and why is that and what's going on there and what might be the cause of that and mm. um, because taking that out taking that time out to do that can really um hone in on what may be going on and so you know you can try a few different things and it can be as simple as um you know that dynamic isn't working i'm going to move everybody around i'm going to move the desks around mm. Um, and the desks move around and all of a sudden a, a, a dynamic between two people is broken and you get a different dynamic and it totally changes the mm. the the the, uh, the environment you know and it's um but but sometimes we can think oh you, we can go for the nuclear option without ever reflecting back on what really what might be going on and why might that be happening and is there an alternative reason for it yeah. <laughs> is there something yeah. i can do to tweak it i i, I know a friend of mine in his business every friday they send out a google form for everyone to fill out what went great this week what would you you know what happened this week that you weren't happy with what would you do to change it and then they all management get together for an hour, hour every monday morning and go through it all and go okay improve every week we're improving and we implement Im improvements so that our staff feel listened to we're so yeah. often forward focused always trying to move forward always trying to you know go to the next thing go to the next thing that that reflection does get overlooked as a really critical part of uh, not just managing a business, but project management, you know, yeah. look yeah, back on your absolutely. project. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the lessons learned, which is a great step of very few people do. <laughs> I want to reflect on what mistakes I may have made because that would make me uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> or I don't have time. I mean, the other thing is people are kind of, as you say, it's that forward momentum and it's like, that's done. Let's move on. You're moving on. Yeah. <laughs> and then you just keep <laughs> making the same mistakes over and over again and wonder why. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. humans. We're so weird. Um, so <laughs> It's so wonderfully I, I i posted a comment on the it was around team coaching and i was the, the wonderfully complex dynamics of team coaching <laughs> it's just it's just so fascinating around uh, um, just you know kind of what could be where, where could they be coming from when they do that <laughs> yeah. what's the most what like makes what, them think that's okay <laughs> what makes them think I, I went I, I went to the carnival with my kids the other night and and indigo my eldest who's 10 and i were on a ride and i said how incredibly bizarre that humans came up with this way of terrifying <laughs> ourselves but finding it really fun at the same time what a strange thing to do yeah I was well, thinking about human behavior while i was on a roller coaster going this is strange <laughs> and we pay for this <laughs> we pay for that level of uh, discomfort I, I think it's the other one the one that i think we go we're running with we obviously can't um, do i don't know park runs there there's five k's yeah, they yeah. run every saturday or whatever so we did used to do them when they when they were running um but i always amazed when there could be like five or six hundred people turning up to the park run and i was thinking this is amazing that you know we're all kind of turning up for this you know shared event or whatever kind of going looking for a way to get exercise which is <laughs> like you kind of go god how has our society evolved to this <laughs> point where we have to do this but i want to run with um, other people yes <laughs> <laughs> this big uh, but it, it's uh, it, we we are a fascinating fascinating <laughs> so, well, i do actually have a psychology minor in my undergrad so i i did sort of go into the human behavior and then went i can't do stats so that was the end of my psychology career oh, unlike yeah, yeah. unlike a math yeah. mathematician brain Mathematic, that yeah, you have yeah. <laughs> so what tools do you use in your business to help you be productive and obviously you've got such a human and qualitative and quantitative fake you know facing business so yeah I'm interested to hear what your tools are yeah well i suppose um I, I definitely within the business i would step back and kind of go reflect on where do i want to get to or what type of work or what type of you know um and i suppose in in the time that i 
the, the uh, 15 years I've seen the 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 the, the crash of 2008 and obviously Ireland was extremely badly hit mm. with that with the, because the impact on the property um, was particularly uh, catastrophic for uh, for Ireland so that uh, obviously I it was quite interesting because the the um, I mentioned the the chain management role I'd sort of had kind of gotten that through a re reference to somebody had referred me on and said look this person would fit the bill and um, so I had that and that was great because I sort of left the uh, job set up the business and sort of had a steady supply of a lot of work for quite a, a while and then the the crash happened and then um the, the business completely dried up. I was on maternity leave when it happened and I was sitting there, we were in a holiday in France and I was sitting there going, this is going to be a very expensive holiday for me because I just knew there would be nothing when I went back. Um, obviously, I worked in the financial services industry, so that was completely hit as well. So it was like... Mm. Um, and then, so 2009 really was around building the skills of a business, which was really interesting. Uh, so it was really back to the basics. Of, well, it was, suppose it wasn't even back to the basics. It was really learning the basics of how do you build a business? How do you do the marketing? How do you get the name out there? How do you do the networking? How do you do the... Um, and so th that was really, uh, I suppose it was, it, was, it, was, it was, that year was a lot of learning and coupled with... Um, my son actually was was uh, who was only a baby was quite sick that year. He was sort of every two three weeks he was very very he'd get sick for a week or two and um, sort of ended up in hospital a couple of times and that. Oh so God. it was uh, in some ways it worked well that I didn't have that much work <laughs> because of the because of the, the crash, mm -hmm. um, and it gave me the time to build up the skills, but it also gave me the time to keep with you know kind of that I was there with him and I was able to 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 I suppose set it take out the time to to look after him when he was in those six stages you know just like every week I think it moved every two weeks he'd be sick for a week and then it moved every three weeks he'd be sick oh. to, for a week you know by the end of the year it was like oh we're getting up to a month without him being sick but he ended up back in hospital in the September so that was the end of that excitement oh, um so that was and then 2010 and then it was starting to kind of build up but that that I suppose that time, that pause for reflection was that really interesting piece around, well, how do you build the business? How do you set out your strategy? How do you get your message across? How do you frame it in a way that people can understand it? Because a lot of what I do is knowledge. It's, it's a knowledge, an application of knowledge and, and experience. Um, but you can't see it. It's intangible. It's how long is a piece of string? How long, much is this going to cost me? So I, well, it depends what's going on, you know. So <laughs> a lot of times people get very scared with that. So you have to put it in a way that they can go, oh, I can relate to that. Oh, I need a bit. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. OK, well, I'll give it a try. I'll give that phase a try. So you're even breaking it out into a break it out into, well, let's do this piece first. And then here are the steps you can take after that. So they're feeling okay I can I can get my head around that piece and then I, I, I but I know there's more if I need it and then when they get to that they're ready for the next piece because you've already brought them on part of the journey um so the the uh that that I suppose that that process taught me how to um you know how do you take partly how do you where do you want to position yourself what kind of work do you want to do and then how do you frame it in such a way that people can engage with it or can understand it sufficiently to determine whether they want it or not. And um, so I have to say that that piece around the business is around, you know, very much the tool of being clear around where I want to get to. Mm. And then that, that breaking it down as, as a good coach would do, breaking it down, <laughs> what would I need to do to get there? Um, it, another thing I, when I when I do kind of get onto something it's like the research of it it's like you know I kind of write what do I need to I need to learn that skill right I need to learn that skill what do I need to do and, and I go and research it and read books and read articles and figure things out or whatever to kind of to, to build up the knowledge to be able to then apply it within the business hmm. and it's so um, we do become jacks of all trades or, or jills yeah. um, in our businesses because I think it is important to know a process and and to be able to do it yourself to a degree before you outsource it even yes yeah so that yeah. i mean not highly technical things like seo and and that sort of side of things but you can't teach something uh, a process to someone if you don't really know how to do it yourself and and we fly yeah. by the seats of our pants but at the same time take the time to learn it and and, and yeah. break it down into a proper process, e yes. 
yeah, yeah. even if you're going to outsource it. Yeah. And I think it, it, sometimes you, you almost need to get your head around what is it, what is it and why do I need it? Yeah. Um, do I you, really you need to educate? Yeah. <laughs> and you need to educate yourself enough to know, and there's so many different things you can do and t tools and techniques and you, know, you get into the marketing and it's like, oh my goodness. <laughs> Don't get me started. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, you, you know, and, and you, you just even all oh, the social media website, you're like, which ones do I need? Which ones are relevant for me? You know, so you need to get your head around. OK, I need to be able to under because I, if I went to somebody, they'd sell me everything. Yeah. Where's and your audience hanging out? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nine times out of um, 10, unfortunately, it's LinkedIn. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> LinkedIn is I do um, love yes, me some well, LinkedIn, for, but oh, it's just not as pretty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, that's true. Yeah. I've taken to that started Instagram now. This I think was it this week. I was like, I finally I'm ready to do Instagram. I'm finally. Do one yeah. really well and then do the other. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think so. LinkedIn has always been my sort of go to, I have to say. Yeah. Um so yeah, so that that's I suppose in terms of the business, uh, that's always that. Look, what am I trying to achieve? And I suppose that to me, it's always, what is the purpose? Why are you doing this? And so I, I you know, I, I would always with the client, I'd always be kind of going, well, why are you doing this? What's what are you trying mm. to achieve with this? Why does this matter? And maybe all of a sudden, you rationalise it with clients, but you don't do it with yourself. You go, Ooh. yeah, but yeah, <laughs> uh, but that's I suppose for me, I, I actually I'm so. I have to know the why. Like I just have to, I, I just, I used to, when I worked in Boston, I used to drive them nuts. Why, why are you doing that? Why are you doing, what are you doing there? Why are you doing, uh, I used to drive them nuts, but uh, very quickly, it, like it, it stood to me because very quickly I understood what I was doing and was able to do it. and was able to spot when it wasn't right. Mm. Um, so you, by, uh, by knowing that, what am I trying to achieve here? where am I going with this? It's like, you know, now I can make sense of it. If I, if I know what I'm doing, what I'm trying to do with it, yeah. uh, which is interesting because as a technique, as, as a client or for your own business, it's really interesting because if you know what you're trying to, in my experience, people often get, um, they get attached to the path mm. as opposed to the outcome. outcome. Yeah, so they often get attached to the, right, I can get my head around, we go from A to B to C to D and we get to E. Mm. So they, and they go, I like that path. I can get my head around that path. I know where I'm going with that path or whatever. Right? But really, you're trying to get to E. Mm. Mm. Regardless of whether you go through A, B, C, you're trying to get to E. But people often forget they, that they're the, what they're trying to do is get to E because they're so busy going from A to B to C to D. So they, they, you, when you know what, you're try, what the outcome is or the output is or the, the purpose is, it frees you up to kind of go, well, that is one route of getting there, but actually there could be two or three or five or 20 different routes to get there. And so if this one isn't working, I can pivot and go a different way, but knowing that I'm still trying to get to E. Um, and I suppose I've, I've always done that in terms of business when things have gone wrong or things have, you know, the, the economy has not necessarily, or even stuff, personal stuff in my own life where I've kind of went like, okay, this is no longer working for me, but I need, you know, this is what I'm trying to achieve. So what are my alternatives and how do I pivot to get there? So it's a really useful tool, um, both for running your own business and when you're consulting with businesses. Um, yeah. Start with why. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't get that from Simon Sinek. I know. I came back all by myself. <laughs> yes. Long before I ever heard of Simon Sinek, it's always the why. What do you do? What is, what's the purpose of it? Yeah. But it's interesting because, sorry, would you, when you are working with people, they, you, you, I find I, I kind of regularly bring them back to, well, we're doing this for this reason, aren't we? And they're going, oh, yes, that's right. We're doing that's right. This reason. And you go off on such a tangent sometimes you, on, on the journey of getting to the end result that you go, why am I here again? And you go, oh, okay. Well, actually, now I've gone this far in the journey. The destination's right there. I don't actually need yeah. to do this now. I can go here. But yeah. you've got to put the work in to, to work that out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Indeed, yeah. <laughs> one of the things that I always ask on my pod is, and one of the things that affects most of the entrepreneurs that I know, I think the stat is 60, 70% is imposter syndrome so what are your methods to overcome this and how do you respond to the bad days in business the ones we're not going to see on instagram or maybe yeah yeah 
Yeah, it'll be a lot of days you won't see it now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, imposters. Yeah, well, do you know, um, so I my name is Ariel, all right, and you kind of go and Jane, Jane, you're going, yeah, Ariel, that's grand, know how to say that, right? But in Ireland, Ariel is a very unusual name, right? And when I was born, there was a, um, a new um, washing detergent called Ariel Automatic. So I spent my childhood being called Ariel Automatic and Daz, and you're very bold. And I do sit on the on the, the roof. No, I sit on top of the TV. And so I think it went through an awful lot, sort of um, 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 a lot of teasing, a lot of you know. So it was called all sorts of names, and um, it, it's kind of interesting because it shapes you a bit. Um, and so you have to kind of make sense of it for yourself. Um, and I, I definitely, as a child, I remember thinking, you know, people would go and because I knew I'd get an awful lot of, of ribbing from people and that kind of thing. So you'd be kind of going, do I want to go or how do I kind of put And I remember thinking, do you know what, they just do it. So I'm just going to do it. So I'm just going to give it a try. So I just started kind of just look, should they did it and they didn't fall apart or whatever. So, so I think from a quite a young age, I had that sort of let me just kind of go for it and just do it and sure if I don't collapse that'll be fine sort of thing. That, but did that you die? Something. No. <laughs> no exactly I just <laughs> die you know so um and I, I kind of think it's sort of the, the combination of those two things I sort of think shaped me in a way that that sort of I was just like you know what I'm just going to do it I'm just I'm not going to if it works it works if it doesn't it's fine I tried. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think I also have a driving value of curiosity where I yeah. just kind of I'm so curious about things that I want to try things out and I give things a go and it's as much for me it's I suppose that the how I, I the, if, if <laughs> the, the imposter syndrome is is a kind of well if I tried it and learned from it that's good enough like that that's the minimum level of success um, and I suppose one of the tools that I would use is with clients is that and and myself to be honest is that what the levels of success so what would your ideal level of success be what would your minimum well my minimum would be I tried it so I at times run half marathons not the marathon I don't think I'd have it in me but at times I run half marathons and sometimes I'm more fit than other times let's put it like that <laughs> the minimum level of success is always I finish it yeah right? if that takes me five hours I finish it um, and so long as I meet that minimum um so you know i'm happy out or whatever and usually i well beat it <laughs> you know it's usually I'm, i've never not finished one um i mightn't have finished it as fast as i would want or whatever but i've kind of met the minimum level and maybe another level up as well so i kind of think that that sort of um the, the combination of all of that is that that i sort of think well do you know what just trying it and seeing if it works is sufficient and so if it doesn't that's fine i'm not going to beat myself up over it and if it works out Happy days. Happy days. And, and, and that's, a that's real... how I deal with it. I don't know whether... real... <laughs> yeah, long-winded way. <laughs> well, I think if it's a real hallmark of entrepreneurship is having the grit and resilience to get through the bad days. And it's how you respond to those bad days is really, because if we all gave up as entrepreneurs, the first time we made a mistake or didn't win a client or had a bad experience with a client, which we've all had, or, or you know, fail to complete a project on time, we none of us would be in business. No, There's no, and specific mentality that you need to, and a mindset that you need to get you through. Yeah, yeah. And I, one of the things, I, one of the biggest things for me for the learning was, um, I when I worked with in a com, in co organizations, whatever, I wasn't really big into networking or seeing the importance of it, or it had a very negative connotation for me. And then I was doing my, my, my executive coaching course at the same time that I was setting up my own business. I was leaving the bit, I'd handed in my notice and I was, um, and I had gone for a job before I had left or whatever. I had gone for a job and they, they had kind of promised me promotion and they didn't give it to me. Um, they were like, oh no, we're not going to. And so therefore I went for a different role that would give me the promotion, but in a different area. So I didn't really want to leave necessarily the L&D, but there was another, I was like, look, if I can't do that at that level, this would be my second choice or whatever. So I went for the interview and I didn't get it, but it was really interesting. So I went for the feedback and I kept, he was giving me the feedback, he was giving me the polite feedback and I was going, yeah, that's not it. So I was going, what is it? You know, it was like, kept pushing him and pushing him. And eventually it came to like, um, you don't network enough. And I was like, all right, okay, that's it. That, that's it. And uh, so I was doing the, the coaching. I was 
attending coaching as part of my program and uh, so I, I was like well I'm setting up a business so I'm going to need to have to deal with this. <laughs> Turns out that's a skill <laughs> really, yes exactly so I went to uh, my coach and we worked through what was the blockages and that and how to reframe it and that was really really interesting because it was it completely change it wasn't that uh, you know I, I suppose I had my belief was it was like you were looking for something and then it completely shifted to sort of like well I can help you you can help me you have needs I have needs we can match these together you know and sometimes it'll work sometimes it won't work you know and then you need to know the numbers as well you need to know the numbers of how many times do you need to meet people how many times do you need to do coffees how many times do you need to so you know they're not all going to work work out so you, yeah you know you know so you kind of go well what are my numbers so well I'm, am I reasonably in, in the numbers here or am I completely way off you know so having those benchmarks of measurement I suppose I'm you might be figuring I'm also very much into the measurement of, of uh, you know I like to know I like to know where I'm going and I like to know the numbers around I like to, to know track. whether I'm doing well I do Le like to track <laughs> lead indicators they're important and they really are that, that that can be those those number of connections you make can be the lead indicator of your performance in two months time you exactly. need to learn to love your numbers <laughs> And it's interesting because you, you, you kind of like different industries will have different numbers, but it is that real kind of like what, you know, the, there'll be the numbers around sales and there's numbers around delivery or there's numbers around projects. Or there's, so they all the different industries or different functions will have different numbers they need to keep an eye on. But uh, and that's that goes back to even the learning around if I have to learn something new, it's, it's not just the what it is but it's like how do you know if you're any good at it like how do you know if you're succeeding in it is one of the things that i kind of need to get my head around to know is this is this am i on the right track here or am i so um i suppose that was one of the it was a real like a key or a real key door i needed unlocked for me it was the whole um the, the whole uh the um the, the how do i know you know how do i get over the fact that i don't really have a positive view of networking. Oh, no. I think that a lot of um, us entrepreneurs, people that work by ourselves, are actually introverts. And so networking is not something that I sort of put myself in a position to do often. Um, it yeah. helps that I, I mean, it doesn't help that I live in a very small town with a thousand people and to go to networking, it's a fair drive. Um, but I think it's also that we're not naturally drawn to be in crowds of people. <laughs> So yeah, yeah, that's my personality. Although, the, well, on the flip side is that when they can sort of, you know, kind of gear themselves up and have those chats and make the connections, then they're much more likely to be longer term connections. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, they're much, introverts are probably much more um, better suited to like business development as opposed to pure sales. Mm. you know where it's the longer term relationships and it's the repeat business or it's the referral business that you would get from those relationships you know they're, they're probably yeah. more um better suited to that type of selling than that than that hard sell of like numbers and you know retail yeah. or that that type you know where you have to um yeah no it's a uh, it's it's I think I think introverts though are having a moment I think they're I think they're, we are I think yeah. we, we made it through 2020 but I think yeah you're right we're yeah. much more suited to long-term relationships than speed dating which is sort yeah. of how networking feels a bit and yeah <laughs> and I just don't oh yeah anyway <laughs> I'm just so that actually brings me to my next question is how do you maintain your sense of community especially in these COVID times yeah um so i suppose well i think there's a lot of that um um zoom drinks zoom drinks <laughs> yes zoom drinks so remember. we're in the process of organizing one uh, for this weekend um so yeah zoom drinks I, I suppose some of the community um is where i live is not where i grew up so i've we've made a lot of friends um in the location and the in, and a lot of it is through the schools so the kids mm. and the schools and that kind of stuff um, and a lot of our friends from college, actually, as it happens, have not li don't live in Dublin. They live in other parts of the country for the most part. So, um, so that that uh, I suppose, like this is where technology does work. The WhatsApp are great for the community. You know, the kind of sense of of um, you know, just helping out and just you know, helping, letting sharing information, sharing. You know, I heard this in this school. You know, how do you 
you know, just to let you know those sorts of things you know yeah. so um that and and where we live is it's kind of it's very close to dublin and yet it has a very feel of a of a, a, a a village almost because you walk down and you meet people and how are you how's it going that kind of thing and people know the the school that the kids went to the the, the junior school like there's so many families are connected or related to each other and this family knows that family and so it's a, it's there's a really really nice um given that we're in sort of a capital city Mm. like two kilometers from the center of a capital oh, wow. city it's actually, yeah like we're really close to the really center close. we can walk to Stephen's green Hang on, you're frozen. You're back. Oh, you're frozen. Yeah. I can see you, but you're can not you moving. Me? Yeah. Hello. Hello. <laughs> oh, you're back. Okay. Yes. Yay. You just said you can walk to Stephen's Green. <laughs> oh, sorry. That's where you're I paused like, quite a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it just the, the we we can't we are that close to the city centre, but yet you feel that you are part of you. You know, you know people in the area, and you know people will will um, help you out and that kind of stuff. So, so it's really really nice actually. I'd be hard pushed to move. I have to say, I've heard um, Ireland is exceptionally beautiful. It's like amazing. So one day we will get there when we're allowed yeah. the planes again yes <laughs> one, day, one day so your your community and i mean i live in a small community as well and, and knowing people around you especially at the moment and when you can walk down the street and see someone you know is far less isolating than our friends who are living in capital cities and you don't necessarily know people in your area when you live in a yeah. capital city so yeah it's really hard yeah. it so is what's, yeah what is your why what keeps you you motivated coming back to why we keep coming back to why <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um I, I my why and i it's always been there it's that kind of um the why is to kind of helping people be the best versions of themselves um and i know that sounds real but i just you you know if somebody needs help and and i can help them i will um if somebody wants help but doesn't want to do it for themselves i'm kind of like mm, i'm not the right person for you but if you want to do this for yourself i'm there for you do you know that, that kind of thing so it's just that that seeing um it, again it goes back to that sort of realizing the potential and that really drives me it's it just that kind of well can, can we and, and it's a couple of the, the combination of i think the curiosity can can you do it or can you you know but the, but but also the, the sort of the, that coming back to that performance piece around mm. can you evolve to be you know learn new skills learn new ways of doing things change your mindset can it really um achieve more than you ever thought you could kind of thing and i suppose yeah. that's a, uh, very much in keeping with why i'm a coach but, yeah. but that's just, what a good coach does yeah <laughs> they, they don't do it for you yeah yeah exactly yeah and i very much i'm, I'm uh, my father used to say um, give a man a fish for feed him for a day teach mm. a man to fish um, uh, feed him for life and that really I think that really resonated and really made sense to me um, and I think that probably is one of my guiding that that and, and uh, actions speak louder than words are probably my two guiding um, sayings or <laughs> principles or <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, that, it, that it just comes back to that so I suppose it, it's, if it is, it's all sort of interconnected yeah. <laughs> in a lot of ways yeah it's really interesting isn't it because we do have our core values which obviously your book speaks to um yeah and everything has to align with those and yeah and, and those ideas and those 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 things that you've carried with you through your whole life yeah always reflect your values and and if things yeah. aren't in alignment with your values then yeah and and unfortunately you didn't get a copy of the book in time it no. is on your way <laughs> it's winging its way yeah but um what a, actually the the it, there's a, a quite a big chapter in the book um dedicated to the conflict that can arise when we uh, um, when we come into when our values come into conflict and that could be our values we're not living up to our values and so therefore it causes a conflict within us um or we we we're working with or we're coming into connect, into contact with people whose values are different to ours um, and it, it sort of they rub up the wrong way and the conflict that can arise or I mean it, the book obviously is is 
the personal values and it's also then in the workplace values in the workplace so you can even get kind of where teams are the, the team's values are aligned but then their values might come into conflict with another team's mm. because what they value is different in that so it talks quite a lot about the conflict that can arise from from values or from not understanding our values um, and it was one of the big things when I did the coaching course was the, one of the big revelations for me was the concept of values and it explained an awful lot. It was like, oh, OK, this ex I get this oh. and I get why I kind of why I connect with some people and don't with others. <laughs> which is, it's um, really so, interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So it really resonated with me. And so uh, when I did value or did, did qualify as the, the coach and I was doing coaching with people, I would always bring in the values. <laughs> so I was just wanted to like, you have to, you know, will you get as much relief? And I was noticing yeah, people where they were, oh, that makes an awful lot more sense. And what's interesting is when you know your values and you can see your value being stood on, you don't have to get as emotionally involved because you're able to go, oh, that's my value being stood on. <laughs> no, I know what it is. Oh, that's as opposed to, yeah. yeah before I, I didn't know what it was. I didn't know why it was so upsetting. So I would end up expending a huge amount of energy on the incident as opposed to what the incident represented. To, to, and it's about us. It's not about them necessarily. Yeah. It, it was one of those things that I think you come through childhood and you take for granted that everyone has the same values as you and thinks the same yeah. as you. And then you get to adulthood and more and more conflict. That's what, that's where adulthood comes in is like you start to have more and more conflict with people because you are expected to step up, you're expected to perform. And I go, why? Why? Like uh, one of the stark things for me to realize was some people write, Dear Jane, blah, blah, blah kind regards blah 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 and some people just write jane blah 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 you know from ariel and i go why why and then i realized my husband did it and he goes what it's saying the same thing i said no but it's not very polite and he goes no darling that's about you go, it really offends me he goes yeah that's about you babe <laughs> yeah and it's really one of the things you go oh okay i'm a grown-up yeah. now <laughs> yeah yeah uh, and it, it, it's interesting because we we, have, we 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 with values we have an expectation that we and others live up to our values but of course everybody else has the exact same expectations so their values we don't yeah exactly we should live up to their values so you can see how it very easily rapidly gets out of control and of course we as you said we assume our values are the same and then we find it and even even um it, you, you might have the same title of value name of value but actually the devil is in the detail because what you value what how you define that value can be quite different to somebody how just somebody mm -hmm. else defines a value so um one of the things that i worked with with people is you know they, they'll have a value of respect and yet they don't respect themselves so they they their definition of respect is being respectful towards other people and you're going but your behavior isn't being particularly respectful it just happens to be not respectful to yourself and they're going Oh, I never thought about that. I never thought that self-respect was part of respect. You know, there you go. There's something to consider. Gosh. So, yeah. you know, it, even the, the definition, it's not just enough for and, and, you know, with companies where they kind of say, well, it's our, we value X and you're going, well, do you have a definition as to what X means? And they're going, no, everybody just knows. And you're going, devil's in the detail. You're going to get and a lot of people interpreting The expectations, the expectations yeah. of your, I mean, we've yeah. just gone through, I'm on a board of a, of a not-for-profit and, and we've just gone through that exercise of what are our core values? How are they defined? Because if you don't define them for people, there's no way to yeah. apply them or demonstrate yes. them um, within the workplace. And it has such an impact on culture. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. One of the ones, favorite ones I love is um, people uh, value of fairness. And when I call in the book, I call it a position. There are some values that are what I call positional values. And fairness is one of them. And how I define it, you know, fair, it, it, somebody who has a positional value of fairness is somebody who defines fairness as, um, uh, as just beyond what's fair to them and just <laughs> before what's fair for anybody That's else. my daughter. <laughs> yeah. It's not fair. <laughs> Yeah. And the, the lecture comes in now wait till i tell you what's fair well <laughs> ariel sent me this book darling let me open the chapter on fairness <laughs> cereal we're never going to our <laughs> i don't care how, to, how nice you tell me it is <laughs> i don't want to hear about that lady oh yeah. my gosh so um to wrap up what are your top tips 
for all the smart women in business across the world? Well, I think know your why. Know your why. <laughs> know what you know your why. Uh, know your why. In in and 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 that you don't have to do it all yourself. And so it's 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 a, around figuring out what what. Do you need to do what do you need to be involved in and what's most important and what are the different ways to get there um and you know for example i, I if it's kind of the work-life balance what are the the tips and i did this uh, several years ago um when i was working absolutely full-time um i was you know i big into food and the kids eating well and that kind of stuff whatever but like I didn't have to be the one who actually cooked the food I just had to put the food the good quality healthy food on the table so uh, we ended up getting um, uh, a somebody to come in she was a student chef she was learning to become a chef or whatever and she came in like for four four hours once a week or whatever and cooked a load of food and left and we had it in the freezer or whatever and so some of those sort of thinking we have to do it all is challenging ourselves is that really true is there another way what i want to do is put good healthy food home cooked on the table for the kids and that the kids eat them but it doesn't have to be me producing it or mm. um, and that is relevant and you know we've you've alluded to it as well around you know we can outsource things whatever we might need to know we need to know why we're doing it and what the purpose of it is whatever but is there a like so one route is we do it ourselves but is there an alternative route um, to be able to do that and and again I suppose that's that balance of what's really right and what's really you know what's really important for us what's the the um and again if for for women who are sort of growing their children raising their families you know that 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 the family stage or whatever that that it is it, it, it does it doesn't you might have to make decisions for now but it doesn't mean forever mm. Um, so it's that kind of balance of what do I need to do to balance it all now, um, but recognizing and keeping the eye on the long term, where, where do I want to get to, but maybe understanding it may balance it all, I might need to take a little bit longer than I might ideally want. Um, yeah, on the subject of um, for <laughs> the value of perfection, if, 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 if anybody's listening to this, smart woman listening to this, who's got a value of perfection, knock it on the head now. That's another tip I would definitely give. Um, it, 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 good enough is, is more than enough. And uh, perfection, you can never reach perfection. Mm. It isn't possible. So uh, again, bringing in that levels of success as a tool. What's my minimum level? What would my ideal level be? Um, and what can, I, what can I realistically achieve? So it's uh, very helpful in terms of the balancing at all. Mm. Mm. Especially uh, perfection prevents action. Because we're always trying to get to yeah. this unobtainable goal, and we we never yes. get there. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Were you going to say something? No, no. Okay. <laughs> I was going to just ask. Oh, well, I was. I, I could tell you talking for ages, but I won't. <laughs> how can um how can the listeners and viewers find out more about you and your work and and get their hands on your books? So this, since this is a video vlog. <laughs> values not just for the uh, office wall plaque and uh, smart objective setting for managers um which uh, breaks down how do you um develop people up and and how do you uh, how do you use smart because when you use smart when you're setting smart we all know smart when we set it for ourselves we know what that is when we're setting it with somebody else we've got the whole communication project process that kicks in so again going back to our understanding and our expectations can be very difficult different to somebody else's and um, so both of those books are available on amazon so um and they the are in. coming yeah that'd be great um, and they will be available through various different um the, currently it's just amazon and the kindle but um from the 27th of march they will the ebook will be available in nook and a lot more um uh, places um, globally um, and then my own website is evolutionconsulting.ie yeah which um, I will also link with me thank you very much um, <laughs> and of course because on the subject of link and LinkedIn um, I am more than happy to link, link in and connect in with people on LinkedIn um, and uh, you can include the Instagram you can oh, start seeing my posts I'm excited <laughs> one day at a time <laughs> one That's post at a time yeah brilliant thank you so much for your time and sharing your learning today ariel i've really appreciated it thank you very much it's been an absolute pleasure jane you've been listening to the smart women of business podcast if you've enjoyed this episode please leave us a review 
and don't forget to subscribe.